I'm Sam Spencer from Channel PSEP News. Today's feature story is about pesticides and agricultural safety and the worker protection standard. I recently spoke with local producer Wyatt Jones and local ER doctor Dr. Lydia Muir about how they address pesticides and safety in their businesses and practice. Thanks for having us, Wyatt. Happy to have you here. When you use pesticides, what sort of precautions do you take? Well, I don't do the spraying myself. Some of my employees mix and spray the pesticides. They're called handlers. And I also have workers. They don't apply pesticides, but they have a chance of direct exposure to pesticides in a treated area, like a greenhouse or a field. Both types need to know about pesticide safety, and I'm responsible for providing them a safe workplace, which is required by the Worker Protection Standard, or WPS. Tell me a little bit more about WPS. WPS is a federal regulation designed to protect workers and handlers and includes three main components, employee training, notification of pesticide application, and personal protective equipment requirements. In the past, I've spoken with representatives from OSHA, the Occupational Safety and Health Administration. It sounds like WPS is similar to OSHA requirements, where employers are responsible for providing a safe workplace for employees. That's exactly right. WPS is actually administered by the Environmental Protection Agency, or EPA. In my case, I need to provide a workplace where people are safe from excessive pesticide exposure. WPS includes providing information about pesticide exposure, protecting against exposure, and ways to reduce exposure. If we go to the main office, I can show you where we post our WPS information. That sounds great. Let's take a look. What all do you post on this bulletin board? My responsibility under WPS is to provide current information to my workers and handlers. This office area is the headquarters of my operation where employees begin their day and grab coffee. And here I post announcements and other important information such as product labels for the pesticides we've been using and a list of recent pesticide applications. We are required to wear all PPE listed on the label and we have to, under to know and understand the label for the products we'll be using. And what does PPE stand for? personal protective equipment, things like gloves and safety glasses. Right, I see. It's also my responsibility to notify my own employees and any other workers who may be around the treated area, including temporary workers, utility workers, crop advisors, people like that. I'm required to have this particular poster here. It states there are federal rules to protect workers and it says that there's a requirement for safety training. It also gives instructions about how workers can keep pesticides from getting into or onto their bodies. Is there anything else that's required to be posted? Yes, I also need to post the REI for application sites and emergency information, the name, phone number, and address of the nearest medical facility. What's an REI? That's the restricted entry interval. It's the amount of time after applying a pesticide that folks must wait before they can enter the treated area without having to wear PPE. REIs differ depending on the product used. That makes sense. So all of the information you mentioned, when do you display it? Generally before the application occurs and it stays up at least 30 days after an REI expires. Applicators are responsible to make sure that they follow all label directions on postings and treatment areas. I'm responsible for making sure all my employees know where the information is located and give updates as necessary. In addition to the written posters and labels, I also tell them verbally, even though I may not have to. Early re-entry is sometimes permitted if it is a limited contact task, like an irrigation task that came up unexpectedly, and if the required PPE is worn. Even if workers will have limited contact with the crop, there can be restrictions on how long they can be in the treated area. Good information. Earlier you mentioned safety training. What all is involved with that? While well, I'm responsible for training workers and handlers on basic pesticide safety, employees need to be trained every five years. If they have WPS training cards issued by their previous employer that show that they were trained within the last five years, I don't need to train them again. Are there specific requirements for new employees? Yes, they have to, be, they have, to have basic training before they can even enter a treated site and then receive the full WPS training within five days of their first field entry. How about training requirements for handlers and workers? Are they different? Yes, there are certain WPS training materials used for each group. I'm a certified applicator, so I can give the training myself. 
Before giving training, I usually look at the EPA's How to Comply manual to make sure I don't miss any pieces of information. What about family members who work on the farm? Family members are exempt from many of the training requirements, but I think it's a good idea for them to hear it anyway. So we've discussed posting safety information and doing safety training. What about once you are actually on site? Well, let's go outside into the field and I can tell you more. Okay, so it's my responsibility to be prepared for potential accidents. There are certain decontamination supplies I have to provide for workers and handlers on site. These are available immediately if someone is exposed to a pesticide while working. What type of supplies? There has to be clean water available to all employees. I have to provide one gallon per worker for hand washing and three gallons per handler for hand washing and or whole body washing. Soap and single-use towels must be available for employees too. I'm also required to provide PPE for employees if labels call for it. Is eye protection required? It can be. Our office sprayers go by what the label tells them to do. If the pesticide label requires eye protection to be worn, then we have to provide more water for eye washing. The eye wash water must be immediately available so it can be carried on site with the person or at a distance where the employee can reach it within seconds. What about the rest of the supplies? Where are they located? They need to be within a quarter mile of where any employee is working. For workers, the supplies can't be located in areas being treated or under an REI. That makes sense because you don't want those supplies exposed to pesticides. The supplies for handlers need to be located in places where they remove PPE after work and stored in a container that keeps the PPE clean and won't be exposed to pesticides. Supplies like water, soap, and towels must be located away from areas where pesticides have been recently applied. Each handler should have at least a pint of clean water immediately available for eye flushing. Pesticide mixing sites also must have these same supplies. What responsibilities do you have if there is an emergency? Like if someone is exposed to a pesticide and gets sick? Well, obviously, we do everything we can to prevent an incident, but if there's an emergency, I will help my employees however I can, like contacting medical personnel. Regarding WPS, employers like me must make transportation available to a person who has been poisoned or injured by pesticides. Also, as I mentioned earlier in the main office, we keep pesticide labels and application information about what pesticides have been applied, when they've been applied, and where they've been applied. The labels can be looked at in the main office, but it's best to take them along with us to a medical facility if someone becomes ill from pesticide exposure. Thank you so much for sharing this information today with us, Wyatt. My pleasure. Now let's go back to the studio. Wyatt also said that an important part of emergency planning is to contact medical personnel right away. With us here is Dr. Lydia Muir, an emergency room doctor. Welcome, Dr. Mir. I'm glad to be here. Tell us about what happens in a pesticide poisoning case. In the cases I've been involved in, the individuals who have brought the victims in have been able to provide us with the information we need to help us quickly diagnose and treat the victim. What information is most useful? Well, our first priority is to keep everyone, including the ER staff and the victim, safe from further exposure. The specific information we need is the name of the active ingredient, when the victim was exposed, how much pesticide they were exposed to, and what decontamination and treatment guidelines are listed on the pesticide label or on the material safety data sheet. Having the label or the MSDS is very helpful. That gives us the pesticide name, the EP registration number, and the first aid information. And having that just makes our job so much easier when we're treating the patient. Who usually brings this information to you? Usually it would be a boss or a coworker who brings the patient in and provides us that information. If a person becomes sick from pesticide poisoning, is there anything the employer or coworker can do in an emergency or perform first aid procedures before they reach the hospital? Yes, they absolutely can. The first aid information is on the pesticide label. Um, and the people that I've worked with in the past have seemed very well trained in how to assist someone who has been exposed to a pesticide and they were able to act quickly in those emergencies. That is good to know. Mm -hmm. Thank you for your time, doctor. You're very welcome. 
For more information about WPS notification procedures, PPE, and other pesticide safety topics, visit the website for the PSET program at the University of Nebraska-Lincoln. This is Sam Spencer. Thank you for joining us for Channel PSEP News.